When AMD shipped me the new Radeon RX 6800 cards, I was really anxious to see what would happen on day one, but I was really hopeful. I spent four days straight having a pretty flawless experience on the Windows side of things. And then the better part of two additional days trying to have the same experience on Linux. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why I'm giving up for now and why I really think AMD needs to start sending early samples of these cards to Linux distribution maintainers before they even think about sending them to people like me. Before we get into it, I wanna take a moment to thank our new sponsor, Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run it on Linode. They have multiple distros available, including Ubuntu, CentOS, Alpine, and Arch, by the way. They've got multiple server plans to make any app or service flexible and scalable. You can use a Linode server to host a blog, to set up a, your own personal VPN, or you can do what I did, which is fire up a dedicated Jitsi server for upcoming community interviews and hangouts. Also, Shickle is gonna be running a Minecraft server, and that is also super simple to install. Linode has 24 seven, 365 support available by phone, regardless of your plan size, so you can get help from a real person if you need it. Right now, Linux for Everyone viewers can get started on Linode with a $100 credit by going to linode.com slash Linux for Everyone. Linode's been doing cloud computing since 2003, which is actually three years before Amazon entered the picture, so they're not trying to take over the retail world like other companies. Just good old-fashioned Linux-loving cloud computing. Linode.com slash Linux for everyone. And uh, again, a huge, huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring Linux for everyone. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Linux for everyone, and welcome home. After I finished my Windows review of these guys, or Forbes, um, I wanted nothing more than to spend the rest of the week playing with Big Navi on Pop! OS, on Ubuntu, on Manjaro, on Fedora, and, and tell you guys what you could expect. Tell you guys about the massive performance boost that you could expect if you were coming from a card like the RX 580 or the GTX 1080, or the uh, the Vega 64, or even last year's 5800 XT. Now look, I'm not a Linux wizard like Wendell from Level 1 Techs or like Michael from Pharonix.com, but I'm not exactly an idiot either. I could not get these cards to run properly under Linux, and I had help from AMD. I had help from the Linux for Everyone community. I had help from the head of graphics at Red Hat. Speaking of Pharonix though, go check out this video if you wanna learn how to benchmark like a pro. Anyway, uh, Pharonix has a great review. You should definitely go read that. But most Pharonix articles, they don't really target the average user. I'm an average user. That's me, I'm an average Linux user. And, and honestly, when I make my content, I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of other people just like me. That's because I want Linux to be approachable. Well, gang, the Radeon RX 6000 series is not something that I would call approachable yet. Here's a quick, quick breakdown of my misadventures over the last few days, okay? So AMD itself only officially supports enterprise-focused distributions like Ubuntu LTS or Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So I downloaded the package drivers that they supplied to press, I slapped these guys on the test bench and I installed Ubuntu 20.04. Long story short, I had the most success with Ubuntu 20.04, but I could not get any Vulkan-based games to run, and that rules out thousands of potential games through stuff like Steam Proton. I tried using AMD GPUs all open variant. I tried using the AMD GPU Pro driver. I tried adding that uh, OIBAF, O-I-B-A-F, P-P-A, to my system and upgrading the entire Mesa driver stack, no dice. I tried upgrading the kernel. Nothing really solved all the errors that I kept having. Then AMD gave me specific instructions for Ubuntu 20.10, and I followed those to the letter. Still no luck. 
Then a few people from Red Hat even stepped in, and they cranked out a valiant effort to get these cards up and running on either Fedora 33 or Fedora Rawhide. They said, here, try Fedora Rawhide with Kernel 5.10 Release Candidate 3 and Mesa 20.3, and then install the firmware that AMD supplied you in that press driver. Guess what? No luck. The best I could get out of that was a 1024 by 768 display on my 4K monitor. But then they added the firmware to the Fedora testing system and they sent me very explicit and simple instructions to add that into the mix. So I tried that on a fresh installation of Fedora 33. <laughs> nope. And by the way, I'm not alone here. Fellow Linux for Everyone creator Shickle had access to an RX 6800 at the University of Arizona. So my experience can essentially be summed up as, first and foremost, I see this as a repeat of RDNA, the 5000 series graphics cards, which, while they were great cards, and I think they were a great step up for AMD, I think that they sucked on Linux for a very long time. In fact, it was a year after the card was released by the time I actually had a good experience with it. Even on Windows, they were bad. For a very long time. And I was assured by many people that this wouldn't be a problem for this release because this is the second generation of RDNA. This is RDNA 2. These problems have been found and fixed, right? Well, no, apparently they haven't because launch day support, not even there on Linux. Yeah, no, despite everything that I was told, not only by community members, but by people who work with the software for AMD in the Linux kernel, I don't know what to say. I, I really just don't. I, I'm frustrated and I'm not surprised, but I'm still confused. And it's a it's a weird mix of wanting to trust that while AMD makes amazing cards, they're also capable of caring about Linux. But as a company, I guess they don't have any obligation to, right? Not for us desktop users, at least. I, I, I don't know. I watched two system engineers in our university try and get it running, and nothing. Right, two of the smartest people I know. You shouldn't have to be perfect on launch day. Fair enough, there are always issues, especially when you release to the masses. You might not even be great. You should at least be functional. Despite constantly being praised about how AMD is, is great for Linux and, and FOSS and how NVIDIA is anti-FOSS and anti-Linux, somehow NVIDIA is the only one actually pulling this off. I can actually run NVIDIA cards on launch day. I don't know. I don't know how I do it. I, I must be magic, right? It's not like I just install the drivers that are provided and it works. Oh, that's what I do. The cards are amazing. The cards are Fantastic. Actually, AMD pulled a hat out of their sleeve. I don't even know what that means. All I know is that the cards are fantastic. The gameplay I've seen of it on Windows, the the, the benchmarks that I've seen, mind-blowing. But on Linux, it's just not there. That's it. That's my experience. So on November 17th, someone at Red Hat told me this. We normally receive pre-production hardware from vendors like AMD under NDA. Not sure why the new cards are coming so late this time. Rawhide is currently the best shot when it comes to Fedora because everything goes there first and it has the latest versions, often including development ones. But right now, no one can tell you if RX 6800 will work with it because none of us has been able to try. Now listen, no one at Valve who's working on the open source Mesa drivers got these cards early. No one at Red Hat got them early. System builders, important system builders, like System76 did not get these cards early. This is a serious problem. Honestly, I would have been happier if AMD would have said, hey, you know what, let's, let's take these two cards that we're gonna ship to Jason, and instead, let's send them over to Red Hat. Let's send them over to Valve. Let's send them over to System76 so that the ridiculously talented engineers over there can ensure that, that people who are using Pop! OS 2004 or Pop! OS 2010 can have a smooth experience on launch day or weeks after launch day. 
Maybe I'm making too big of a deal out of this since it kind of seems like no one else has been able to get their hands on these cards anyway. And I'm not just talking about companies, I'm talking about consumers. But even if I could get these cards to work just as perfectly as a brand new RTX card on launch day or, or past generation Radeon cards, I just, I don't want to spend hours and hours benchmarking a product that I don't feel like is ready for the average Linux user. I would rather wait until your distro is able to offer you a smooth experience out of the box. You know, the, the kind of situation that, that we love and appreciate about Linux, where we just slap that RX 580, that Vega 64, onto our motherboard and it just works. It's just there, it's all in the kernel, it's ready to rock. So I would rather wait until there are no caveats, no compromises, and no headaches. So. Thanks for your patience. And in the meantime, maybe join me in, in helping uh, to urge AMD to better support Linux distributions for their next card launch. It's not that hard. You, you set aside five or six cards. You have the distro maintainer sign an NDA and you ship them the stuff. It happens all the time with OEMs like Dell, with Lenovo. Anyway, I, I, I'm frustrated. I am frustrated. I'm frustrated for me. Uh, that, that my content plans got derailed. I'm frustrated for you guys because I think if you're not a command line wizard or know how to recompile drivers and kernels, you're going to have a bad time with this card. And that's a shame because they're fantastic. The hardware is terrific. They stay cool. They're ridiculously performant. Um, they're gorgeous. They're, they're sturdy. They're, they're well constructed. But right now, I can only enjoy them on Windows. Well, until we meet again down there in the comments or on Twitter, on Facebook, on Mastodon, on Library, you guys take care and take care of each other, okay?